Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar today. I'm uh, Francois Heshmi, Product Manager at Four Winds Interactive. Uh, we're very excited about the content player for iOS uh, product release. Uh, this new product allows you to leverage the iOS platform uh, and more specifically iPad devices uh, for your digital signage and uh, interactive uh, applications. Uh, content player for iOS is a native iOS app available uh, for you to download uh, in the App Store. Uh, we will basically give you a quick demo uh, of how you can access and download uh, this app uh, in a minute. Uh, this new product brings the power and ease of use of the Forwind software uh, to the iOS platform. Uh, this is our second product targeting this platform. Almost a year or a year and a half ago, uh, we uh, released IDS, which was our first product uh, targeting uh, this platform. Uh, IDS Kiosk leverages the uh, Safari web browser uh, to render your signs and applications. Uh, this approach uh, works fine uh, for many applications uh, and use cases. However, it's not uh, resilient to network outages. Uh, and more important, it's not optimal when it comes to transferring and caching large uh, content files. Uh, for that reason, uh, we, in, when we started working on uh, Content Player for iOS, we used a different mechanism, and we made sure that uh, this mechanism allows you to uh, store your content uh, or cache your content uh, directly on the, on the iPad. Also, the uh, Content Playback takes full advantage of the iOS platform and its interactive uh, capabilities. So the content player for iOS that we have available in the Apple iOS store uh, supports the iPad and iPad mini devices. Uh, we will be adding support for additional iOS devices in the next release of this product coming up over the next uh, few weeks. We also have uh, multiple releases uh, planned for the second half of this year. Uh, one just uh, important uh, item to note that we're going to continue uh, to keep, uh, so we're going to continue to support uh, the IDS kiosk product for any customers that are currently using it, and it's going to continue to be available uh, in the iOS uh, app store. Uh, we're also looking at uh, one point in the uh, future to merge these two products uh, together. So with that, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Aaron Bach, who will provide you with a demo of Content Player for iOS. Great. Thank you, Francois. Good morning, folks. Uh, nice to spend time with you today. So as Francois mentioned, uh, we want to give a, a pretty demo of uh, Content player for iOS this morning. Uh, the first stop I want to take is uh, the, probably the first question: How do you go about downloading this app? Um, like all iOS apps, it is available in the App Store. This is actually powered through Apple's uh, B2B business to business App Store. Um, you'll notice that if you, uh, in all cases, just search for content player, we are the first result that appears. Um, important to know that this app is free to download. Uh, the app itself, the distribution of it is free. Um, there is a licensing component that can be applied to it and that uh, sort of differs in different scenarios and different environments. So I encourage you to talk with your Four Winds Interactive sales rep for more details on that. Um, also do want to mention that if you have a fairly a large number of iPads and needs to distribute this uh, in a more streamlined fashion, you may want to look into Apple's uh, volume purchasing program uh, that has the ability for a mobile device management solution to be attached to it so that uh, you can distribute the app to multiple iPads in a, in a very quick fashion. So again, if that's applicable to you, I encourage you to, to look into that uh, with Apple. But once Content Player is downloaded uh, on your iPad, again, like any other app, it just exists in the environment. The first stop uh, that I'd like to take a look at is the settings app. Again, this is the iOS location for all the generic settings across the iPad and many applications store their settings here as well. You'll notice at the very bottom here we have Content Player uh, as an entry for a settings screen. And I want to just quick, quickly talk about each of these uh, as it'll, it'll help make our uh, 
uh, demo a little bit more uh, pertinent. I want to do a mention before we dive into this, um, we have a full list of documentation. Our wiki, all of our, uh, all of our documentation is accessible if you have a Four Winds wiki account. Again, uh, if you don't have an account to that, uh, please talk with your Four Winds either sales representative or customer service manager and they can get you access to that. So what we'll cover here today is not necessarily all the features that the documentation outlines, but probably the most pertinent ones. Um, you'll notice kind of right away inside the settings app, there's the ability to set an access code. Uh, I'll show you here in a moment. Content player for iOS is intended to run uh, as if it's the only thing running on the iPad. Uh, one of the ways that we prevent that, uh, you know, keep that in place and prevent external users from bypassing that is by having a access code. So we'll show you here in a moment. The idea is that with a three finger swipe and an entry of the access code, you can get back to the settings. Uh, but beyond that, Content Player for iOS is uh, the, the option at play always at hand. There's also the options in here for things like scheduled refreshes of deployment. Um, I should mention real quick that just as uh, those of you who are familiar with our software stack already, just as you might deploy a sign to a Windows player and it will periodically go back and check for updates to that deployment, uh, the Content Player for iOS has a similar functionality here where you can schedule deployments for certain hours of the day, certain days of the week. Uh, you can have fairly fine-grained control over that scheduling. You also have the ability to uh, control orientation locking. So if you develop an application and uh, content manager and then deploy that out to the iPad and it only makes sense in a portrait setting, you can actually uh, remove the orientations that don't make sense for your particular application. Again, a good thing to note. Um, we see a lot of situations where an iPad might be mounted to a wall. We also see a lot of situations where someone might de develop an application uh, and the iPad is just free form passing from hand to hand. That's where orientation locking is useful uh, to prevent it, the screen kind of flipping around. Probably the, the most primary setting I want to mention here uh, is the ability to uh, have a, a support email address. Right now it's, it's uh, configured to be one of our email addresses, but you can certainly put an email address either to an individual or to a group in there. The idea being that as you're running the application, if you ever need to send logging or diagnostic information from the application to a set of users, uh, you can configure the email address for that uh, individual or set of individuals here. So again, fairly simple uh, list of settings, all fairly straightforward. Um, and with that said, with that kind of in mind, let's take a look at the application itself. So all I'm going to do is just click on Content Player for iOS. I'm going to quickly, we'll talk about applications here in a moment. I'm going to do a three-fingered sideways swipe, which brings up this window for access code. And I'm going to enter the access code that we have enabled here in our demo iPad. This brings you to kind of the main screen of the application. Uh, the place to start is by hitting this little question mark in the lower left. This brings up a set of coach marks, uh, which if you're familiar with this concept, is just a quick indication of how the application works. Um, you'll see there's a lot of different functionality here. Uh, we'll talk about each of these uh, in turn. So the idea with Content Player for iOS uh, is that in much the same way as we deploy signs uh, from Content Manager to other platforms, uh, we simply publish a URL from Content Manager, and then that URL can be entered uh, into the text area up at the top here, and that's where the, uh, where the sign will be controlled from and configured from. All of that deployment information, I should note, is pulled down and it's rendered natively. So whenever you see an application running in Content Player for iOS, what's occurring is that uh, the application is actually rendering that uh, rendering that information in native iOS language, if you will. It's not an HTML app. It's not emulating it in any way. Many of the benefits that you would get from a normal iPad app, like gesturing, smoothness of transitions, things like that. So you'll notice that uh, I, all I had to do there was touch on the lower right edit icon, that blue rec on the lower right of the window. And this brings up uh, kind of some deployment configuration information that you can configure and manage. Um, a lot of different entries here. Uh, the majority of these entries are designed to show you what content and what assets are currently loaded on the iPad. So in my case here, if I just touch on this row that says content, the second row down, you'll see that there's a lot of different content items. This is a quick way that you can ensure that your deployment from Content Manager made it successfully to the iPad. You can ensure that all the content items that you were expecting are present and accounted for. Similarly, there are some other items here where you can look at raw files. 
So for instance, if I want to ensure that I've got you know, the imagery that I'm looking for in my deployment, I can touch on the images row and I can see a list of images along with their file sizes and creation dates. Again, just to confirm that what we're looking for is actually present. And the last thing I want to cover here uh, in terms of settings, uh, probably the most interesting one, is this uh, section here in the middle that says channel bookmarks. Content Player for iOS has the ability to store bookmarks uh, in much the same way that mobile Safari and other applications can store bookmarks. And the idea here is that this is uh, a place where all of our deployed applications can live and then you can toggle back between them. So let's say you have uh, a situation where you have multiple applications that are appropriate for your iPad. You can actually deploy those all and configure them to the iPad ahead of time and then switch between them sort of at will. We'll go into that a little more shortly, but that's the useful feature uh, and it's one we use a lot. So if I hit close, primarily uh, it's a very simple, uh, simple setup. Once my URL, uh, again, published from all I have to do is hit this green lock icon right here at the bottom, and that launches the app full screen. Okay, at this stage it's just like a normal content player that you're used to seeing from us. Uh, all of the uh, interaction in this particular sign build works as is. There's gesturing, there's live data, there's imagery, uh, all sorts of transitions. Lots of different items in the build uh, that you would expect. I will note real quick that the majority um, of the functionality that you might build in a simple application uh, and deploy to a Windows player should work just fine in Content Player for iOS. Our documentation on the wiki does outline the areas where that's currently uh, at a bit of a feature disparity. Um, we're working at a fairly regular pace to push out new, app new updates to this application. So uh, in general, most of the common pieces of content and functionality within uh, Content Manager and the Content Player that you're used to do exist in Content Player for iOS with the understanding that we're, we're continuing to press forward with regular, regular releases that fill any uh, gaps of that functionality. So with that said, I want to talk a little bit about uh, just some different applications that you might use an iPad for and more specifically that you might use Content Player for iOS. Uh, what you're seeing here, as I've talked about briefly, is an interactive meeting room sign. In the cases where you might not want to mount an actual screen and a PC and all of the associated peripherals that might come with a traditional meeting room sign, uh, this is a nice option. You can actually uh, mount an iPad on a wall with or without an enclosure, and then you have a fully functional meeting room sign, again, with a, a fairly low-cost uh, device in the iPad. But I should mention that... Uh, Meeting room signage is not the only thing uh, that iPads are useful for in this setting. Um, we really don't restrict any sort of industry or any sort of type of application. Again, as long as the, the feature parity is present, most applications in most industries will work on the iPad. I've got a couple different uh, instances here where in the case of maybe uh, a restaurant or a, a quick serve facility, I've got a, the ability to do a menu. And notice here I'm going to rotate the iPad and get it to uh, rotate and, and lock the orientation there. This is another example, maybe in a, in a again, QSR type setting where you might want to have a, a menu present on an iPad that folks can pass around and it's a little more personal in that case. Again, another application that was built purely in Content Manager uh, and just as it would have been deployed to uh, regular Content Player for Windows, uh, now it runs as, exactly as you'd expect on Content Player for iOS. Okay, so again, the thing I want to leave you with here uh, in terms of types of applications, um, the majority of applications that you build, again, if they're fairly simple, will work right out the bat um, on content. And again, it's not restricted to industry or type of application. Uh, we've run meeting room signs. We've run virtual concierges. Uh, we've run uh, sort of corporate announcements. We've run all sorts of applications through Content Player for iOS. It's merely intended to uh, make the iPad a, a suitable platform for applications that you would develop in Content Manager. Okay, one last thing I want to talk about, um, we get a lot of questions about securing the iPad. Um, again, I talked about that three-fingered swipe that allows you to control access to this sort of administration screen. Um, in general, though, to lock down the iPad even further, uh, there's two routes that we suggest. And both of these are covered in more detail on that wiki documentation, so I'll, I'll let that be the authoritative source. 
But if I go back into our settings app here, one uh, thing that you can do, if you have an enclosure uh, that can cover up the home button, the sync pad, you have the ability within the settings app here to turn off a lot of different features like uh, the ability to multitask, as you can see here, or the ability to uh, open browsers. You can disable a lot of that functionality uh, uh, through the settings app here. So one route that you might consider when securing an iPad, if it, if it does exist in an enclosure um, and that can hide the home button, then uh, folks are really locked down in terms of their hardware access, uh, the functionality is really locked down in terms of what you can configure in the settings app, and then the three-finger swipe remains sort of the only way in and out uh, of the application. The other option that we, we greatly uh, suggest, uh, I believe it's under accessibility. If you go under accessibility, there's a learning sort of group here, and there's a single item called guided access. <clears throat> and as you'll see from that description, it talks about uh, keeping the iPad inside of a single app. Um, there's a lot of information that can go into guided access on iOS, something we'll cover here today. But this is another option in cases where uh, maybe you can't enclose the iPad and it's something that needs to be distributed or handled directly by a client or a consumer. Uh, guided access can allow you more fine-grained control uh, of keeping content clear for iOS at the forefront uh, of your application. Okay, so those are two examples. Again, we'll refer you to our, our online document uh, for more solid information on that uh, going forward. So with that said, folks, that's probably the primary demo. 